Just as you can do with your individual players, monitoring their technical skills, having a technical Olympics, giving them an opportunity to see how much they're improving, you can do the same thing with your team as a whole. And there are a few ways you can do this, and I'm gonna give you two. Number one is when you do certain exercises at your practice, you have certain drills and skills that you like to work on in larger groups, give your team an opportunity to know how well they did in something. So this might be that you come up with a grading system which I generally try to stay away from, but I've seen become very effective. So if a team plays in a certain type of uh, drill or game in your training session, you're able to help them by giving them a ranking or a rating of how well you did, maybe on an A, B, or C type of scale. Or what I, what I do most often is give them something concrete to shoot for. So if we're doing a possession drill, let's say, and we complete a certain number of passes in this exercise, I wanna make sure my team knows how many goals that they scored and how long it took them to score those goals within that exercise so that the next time we do it, I can look back at my notes that I took after training and say, okay guys, last time we did this, it took us three minutes to accomplish you know, X, Y, Z, and now let's see if we can achieve that in two minutes. Um, this works really well, especially with technical exercises, so team technical drills, if you're working on a passing or a finishing exercise. One of the best things I've learned working at the University of North Carolina with the women's soccer program is that we monitor most of what our players do. We track goals and assists in training sessions, and what that does is it makes for a more competitive environment, but it also helps the players understand what kind of results they're getting where they're out on the field. So instead of being in a position to talk with one of your forwards about, well, I really think that you need to hit the target more, instead of doing that, if, if they just did a finishing drill where they each hit 20 shots, I can go talk to that player now and say, if I've monitored it, and say, look, you know, you just took 20 shots, eight of them were on target. How do you think we can improve that? And then that will give the player the motivation, hopefully, to go forward and improve without me as a coach having to be overly critical because what that does when you keep track of this type of data is it basically puts you and the player on the same side against the numbers. So if the numbers are showing something, we can talk to the player about it and see what the player wants to do to help improve and let them know that you're there for them to help them improve. So it's not just that you're saying, hey, Johnny, you know, you can't hit the broad side of a barn with your shot. Although you might say that, you also might be saying, well, Johnny, you just took 20 shots, two of them hit the target. How can we improve? And do you want to improve? And odds are Johnny's gonna say, well, coach, I, I think I see that I can do better. And then you can give them those suggestions because they're gonna be open to whatever you have to coach them on at that point. So that's, that's one of those, those tips that I think is invaluable for youth soccer, high school soccer, and really any level for that matter. Um, another thing you can do if you're talking about a team as just a group in their training is put them in blocks and have them play against each other. So if it's a particular exercise or drill, you might have the defenders together on a team, the midfielders and the forwards. And another thing you can do with that setting is you can keep them in those groups throughout the year. One thing we do at the University of North Carolina in our spring season is that we have our uh, kids grouped up in teams of five. And so now every time we have a team competition of some kind, you're not only on a team, Maybe it's, a, maybe it's 11 versus 11, so you have uh, 10 field players. Well, we have one team of five staying together and another team of five. You put them together and that makes a team of 10 plus a keeper. So when they play a game against the other groups, not only are they playing to win that 11 v 11 game for themselves and the team that they're on at the moment, they're also playing because if they win that game, their group of five gets credit for that victory. And so at the end of the spring season, we're able to add up all the competitions that that group of five competed in. Now, whether that be a five versus five, whether that be 11 versus 11, or whether that even be something like a one versus one or two versus two, we're able to keep track of which team won the most games.